Hello, everyone, and good morning, Gillian. Hi there. So, episode 33. Yes. I'm, um, I know I'm saying this every single time, but I'm more like, we passed 30, 31, 32, 33. Oh, I know. <laughs> really exciting so i do apologize to my listeners for my enthusiasm but um, no i can't <laughs> i can't stop it yeah however today we are talking about content and some um a couple of of course content is a big topic but we're gonna focus about on kpis on um different topics how should you select topics when it comes to to content and how to repurpose it and mm. i do know Gillian kpis I think is one of your favorite topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. It's an important one. It is. It is. And it will dictate actually the rest. <laughs> the it, can, it can. It can. <laughs> it should at least have a seat at the table. Let's put it like that. I do agree. I do agree. And I, I do feel a lot of um, the entrepreneurs. I was thinking, what word should I use? And I will just use... Um, uh, a lot of of the of the entrepreneurs out there or or content creators forget to look at that because mm-hmm. it's quite easy to create content especially now that you have jet gpt or you know it, it's it's not that hard to create content but what will make the difference between a content that actually produces something mm-hmm. is, um how do you approach it what do you use how do you where do you distribute it keywords um there are a couple of ingredients that are a must when it comes to content. Mm-hmm. And I think the most important is how do you measure and what do you do with those results? Because mm-hmm. that can dictate the next content that you're creating and people tend to forget about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking how to start with this one. Maybe we should define what do we understand by content. <laughs> Looking at your face. Yeah. All right. Let's start there. Great idea. Let's go ahead. Get us started, Veronica. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did. I did approach it. So content, yeah. actually, when you say content, I think the majority is thinking about writing content, mm-hmm. articles, right? And I have a feeling you are thinking about the same. However, for me, content can be much more than that. Content is podcast, right? We have audio, we have videos, uh, we can create articles from this. So content is everything that is created and can be a audio uh, writing or video that express the, it's in line with the company values, let's say, mm-hmm. um, and is placed out there to represent, um, I think episode, last episode, we talked about personal branding and company branding, but let's stick in this context on the company branding. Is representing your company or your voice as, as a company or as, or as an entrepreneur if you're just a solopreneur. Um, this is what I understand by content. Do you agree? Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think it's it's what you said. It's anything that can be created or curated even. Um, I think... Good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to, to think about or to quantify uh, what content is. I think content is also um, relevant for events, relevant for team meetings. Um, there's a lot of places that content shows up. It's in our website. It's in our email communications. I mean, it's a lot of places. And I also think one of the best, uh, most obvious and also most uh, overlooked or uh, forgotten about or underappreciated category of content is spoken content. There's oh, yeah. the kind of the deliberate when we're going to be on a stage and speak or you know facilitate a workshop, but there's also how we communicate about ourselves and our team and our work and our company, etc. That's also content. So uh, content can fill many different size and shape uh, vessels for sure. Correct. Mm. Um. Yes, webinars and and uh, yeah, there are a lot. Um, mm. I'm trying to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All <laughs> right. So <laughs> talking about for for the sake of this episode, let's take. Um, I agree with you. I agree fully with you what you said, but I think we should leave the emails 
and how you communicate with your clients out from this episode um, and focus more on the actually not let's 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 keep it there because uh, but I was thinking for, for when I was preparing for this episode in content is more the strategic one that you are preparing yeah, it fits there. <laughs> so like, con con yeah, yeah. So content, <laughs> like for this conversation, I think is like content strategy. Exactly. Um, and then perhaps some KPIs and like where to incorporate that. Um, and then perhaps related to those could be some of the topical side. So if you, you know, any tips or just how you approach, how to approach the, it. The, yeah. yeah, the topic. Because otherwise it would be way too complex. And yeah, we can, exactly. maybe we can have a, a follow-up for sure. uh, for the emails and and speaking engagements because yeah the platforms because those are all exactly. different but just in general yeah. like the larger kind of strategy the KPIs and then possibly um how to approach topic generation and or repurposing of content some you know some specific Perfect. things that we do or have done or are familiar with so perhaps that's a good place to kind of yeah, the, where to draw a line in the sand about this conversation, <laughs> because many of these topics can all bleed into each other. But, you know, trying to be respectful of each other's time and our listeners time and to try to have a kind of a cohesive conversation. Let's let's stick in, into that that quadrant. So uh, Gillian, con when... content strategy. Yes. How do you approach it? So content strategy. So first, um, when I think of yeah, strategy, I'm immediately thinking of purpose, right? So what is the purpose of whatever I'm trying to achieve um, and which content might be a part of, right? Mm -hmm. So straight away, some examples like, uh, yeah, so just a few examples. So it might be uh, to educate. Mm -hmm. It might be for thought leadership. Um, it might be to express my company brand or it might be to express my personal ideas or you know, personal brand uh, values. Uh, um, it might be to nurture aspects. Spend quite a bit of time thinking about uh, how I want to interact with folks that are in the process of we're getting to know each other. So they're not actually clients yet. We're just in that getting to know you phase. So thinking about how to curate an experience for them through content. So mm -hmm. I think that's an important one. Beautiful um, way to present it. I like it. Oh, thanks. I spend a lot of time thinking about this. <laughs> uh, and then also just in general, it's I think about um, is it about the networking side and building relationships and connecting people, ideas and resources? So that's a pretty uh, strong component of my strategy always because it's my default and what I love to do. So I'm always trying to apply strategy to that and then looking at how to quantify that work as well um and then showcasing others um because for me those are all opportunities to what i think of as demonstrating our brand so demonstrating my brand um so i think yeah it's like a picture is worth a thousand words right so yeah. this idea of being able to demonstrate um my brand values and my personal values because that's been that was my episode 13 was talking about aligning my personal values with my my business my brand right um so yeah so that's how basically I think about what the, the uh walk the talk right yes you need to, you yes need to i do like your approach and i i, I must say is mine is also similar um and it's very in line so how how i approach it is definitely According to my values, what do I want to place out there? How do I want mm -hmm. to be known either as me, Veronica, or the spin ideas? Uh, but also looking at the audience and understanding, um, and that will dictate a little bit the platforms or the, the topics, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. What are they interested in? Where, where is, what's the place where they are at this particular moment when, when I'm creating the content? Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, depending on that because we, we did approach speaking engagements for example or or things like that like where do i want to be present and the the form of the content do i want to have it as as written content and video like how do i do it um and also the frequency i hmm. think that's very important and consistency we kept on discussing about that but consistency is very important as well because what's the point of creating 
an amazing article, you create it once, maybe twice, you start having the engagement and then you stop. Mm-hmm. And then all the hard work that you created disappears. Mm-hmm. The momentum, uh, and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what is very important as well is um, what's the goal, what's the purpose? Mm-hmm. Why do I create this? Um, because if I just say I want to be visible and I'm just going to create and just place things there, it will not work. You're going to confuse people. If you're not working, like you said, I want to educate people um, and all your content has this as goal, It's you can talk about the same topic from different points of view. And it's one way you create the, that piece of content if you have in mind, my purpose is to educate mm-hmm. or my purpose is to sell or my purpose is to show how great I am at this, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are different. It's the same topic, different Mm -hmm. approach, different delivery, different piece of content, actually. Yeah. And that will, you do need consistency in this as well. And that being said, it doesn't mean you can't have different types of content serving different purposes. So one Mm -hmm. can be about thought leadership, one can be about educating people, and one can be about... Uh, selling and you have these three pillars and you create different type of content for each of these pillars and you promote them in parallel Mm -hmm. but that will dictate also the kpis because if your purpose is to sell then you are monitoring probably how many people read from this how many people booked a call with you dictates the type of call to action that you have inserted in your article and of Mm -hmm. course the bottom line is how many people actually booked with you right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many clients became clients sorry how many um consumers content consumers became clients Mm -hmm. but if brand awareness that's we do know it's very 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 hard to measure yes yes no like you know how many people may be viewed or read you can monitor that but it's very hard to actually put the proper number to eat and to to do a proper follow-up or maybe you can get in a database and you can continue the conversation the nurturing phase that you say like uh, yeah you have that group of people that you are still uh, dating if you can use this analogy like you're not you're not properly dating you're still flirting let's say right (laughs) yeah it's it's, um can be very complex and very beautiful actually Mm -hmm. you do need to be aware and this why clarity is needed in order to Mm -hmm. create these processes and the strategy and how do you how do you create the funnel basically Mm -hmm. and i think also important is to think uh, to be real about this the scope or the or the footprint of our business um in terms of yeah volume of people right so uh, to have some sort of idea of what your kind of sales process looks like. Yeah. Um, have it ideally, you know, to me, anytime I can operate from a place of at least being, you know, data informed at a minimum, having some data and then ultimately being able to make data driven decisions is a really happy place for me. <laughs> um, but I think sometimes it's, it's, you know, it also can be um, knowing like if you, you know, for every 10, you know, prospect calls like sales calls how many of those end up becoming a new client so if you start to put these numbers into place um is it one is it eight like how many is it and then starting to look at drawing out that you know that customer journey like how many of them uh like which is your most effective tool like are they reading your blog articles are they following you on social media or are you meeting people at events and being able, you know, are you captivating people through speaking or what what channels are most effective for you? I think it's really important to know that. Um, but in terms of the digital side, I think um, it is it is a double-edged sword because on the one hand, it's great to be able to deploy all these tools that can measure the you know, number of visitors on our site and how many people read and for how long and who clicks on what and all that is can be really great. But for a lot of businesses, they're dealing with fewer people and it's much more so about the managing the relationships um, yeah. and, you know, kind of being human and uh, not robotic per se. Exactly. Um, you it's know, very it's hard like to make like, that difference between being yeah, robotic and automating yeah. too much yeah. and having that human connection. 
Yeah, I think so. And so because of that, I'm going to use that as a segue, it's my attempt to use that as a segue into a, perhaps a different way to think about content creation for a minute, and specifically the strategy of content creation. Um, and so you mentioned AI and there's, you know, there's no, it's quite simple to create content now. But right. one area that uh, maybe it's just because I'm like a super nerd, but I actually think this is true, at least it's true for me, um, is the the time that I'm putting in doing research and working on a piece of content, those are that's not time that's just gone. It's not time that's only going into the blog article that I'm writing about or something. Mm -hmm. It also is content that I'm working into conversations that I'm having with people as well. Um, whether it's, it's via good yeah, a podcast or if I'm teaching a workshop or whatever, or just in conversations with people. Um, this is these are things that I routinely bring up because I'm it's stuff that I'm interested in and I tend to talk about things I'm interested in. I tend to ask questions of people on topics that I'm interested in and generally I'm you know interacting with people that we have a shared interest. So if I can uh, engage in conversation with somebody that has a similar interest and they may have, be a potential new client um, or an influencer to a new client situation. The moment I start relaying some of this, some of the research I'm working on, et cetera, um, that can be quite effective because that's a, an awesome opportunity to demonstrate, right, in this example, my brand, that I, A, this is how I approach content, that I do the research, I spend the time, that I'm thoughtful, um, I'm like highly engaged in this process, et cetera. There's all these attributes associated with it, aside from just going on the other side of the spectrum is just using some tools, looking up, uh, yeah, how many people are searching for certain things and then crafting a, like a very, like a surgical uh, SEO, yeah. like super tight SEO title and content and the whole thing. It's like- I'm Such yeah, a big issue can... with those companies and they're yeah. so- And yeah, actually I mean, that you piece of that. content is shit. I apologize. But if you read that article, it doesn't offer any information. And I think it's actually hard uh, instead of of helping the brand, is is damaging the brand because if well, if the tools are used properly, then it can be. But that's going to better suit itself for a company that has a higher volume of traffic. Yes, um, as and opposed depends to who's, smaller. Who's creating it? Because a lot of the companies out there, what they are creating is really bad, but they yes. are s s selling it. Um, yeah. There were so many things that came to my mind when, when you were speaking, and I agree with you fully wh on what you said. And I think the biggest uh, the biggest thing that people need to remember, it doesn't matter what you, you're using. And actually, mm -hmm. AI and how you approach creating a, a content, for example, what that will the difference will be, are you an expert? Are you or are you approaching it superficially? Because you exactly like the SEO companies out there, because they will use the tools, they will create, it will serve the purpose. But when you really read that piece of content, you will see it's actually not, it doesn't say anything because SEO keeps on repeating specific keywords. And if you don't do it in a nice way to actually provide content, you put to put meat on those bones as well. It's nothing. And you can create a lot of content and AI creates content, but what makes the difference? You need to see it as a tool. You mm -hmm. see it to make your, your life or your research easier, but you still need to go and read and mm -hmm. put your own tone of voice there, put the brand tone of voice, make sure it's expressing your personal ideas that the AI will not be able to say it. Even if you keep on um, delivering the message and you improve it, we'll get there, but still... Is not mm -hmm. the same because your ideas mm -hmm. are going to change depending on your experience, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas AI doesn't do that. So you do need to bring that. And that will make the difference between someone being a real expert and really knowing something. And the fact that you do the research and you have the conversation, it will be a, a deep conversation, not a superficial one. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to see the difference and you're going to decide with whom you want to work because right. it's someone that just talks and presents themselves an expert. But if you ask five questions, you realize they have no clue what they're talking about. Mm. They just know the, mm. you know, the surface. The buzz, yeah, the buzzwords. The buzzwords. 
or yeah. is someone that actually knows what they're talking about and they have mm -hmm. a deep understanding and they can actually create and be creative and do different things with mm -hmm. whatever you're discussing yeah so how do you um i'm curious about a couple things so first i'm curious how you approach topic generation uh and i'm also curious about how you do you have certain like production numbers like the number of pieces that you want to produce or it's like that version of a kpi so i'm curious about either of those like the topic side or how you yeah what your objectives are for content creation topics depend on the on the goals so for example when i last been ideas my main focus was on uh, educating people what is a strategy and why do you need a strategy and understanding mm -hmm. education um and i was writing about that and i was all my content was created around that and i was writing one article per week so mm -hmm. it was and uh, what helped me quite a lot was setting like oh, i need to write on this day and between these hours and uh, mm -hmm. it took me a while to get into that read mm -hmm. but once that you get into the read like i did that for two years it was very easy because it becomes, it's part of your routine, like, right? Waking up and having your morning coffee. And if you're out of balance with that routine, you feel something is not okay. Mm -hmm. That became the same. So it, it took me a couple of months to get into that. You know, like I'm waking up, grabbing my coffee and open my laptop and start writing. And what mm -hmm. also helped me knowing that I was the night before, I was thinking, oh, I need... I need to create content tomorrow. So what do I want to write about? Oh, of course, in terms of topic. And I was mm -hmm. always getting inspired of what happened the week pre the previous week. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you you have the goal, and then in terms of you need to split it. What's the main purpose? What what does it serve? And then you do a list of okay, what I know about, what my clients need, and I start writing about that. But what really helped me a lot also was being on the ground and talking with people, going to network yes. events and understanding or talking with my clients and understanding where they are at this point and what do they need. So even if I had like an overall idea of what I want to write, the concrete topic was actually coming that week based on what was um, happening. Mm -hmm. um, and that really worked for me because um, I was on the moment with what was happening and the needs of my clients. So I was basically answering what they needed and it brought me clients as well. So was one goal was for me to educate and branding mm -hmm. and directly actually it brought me clients, even if that wasn't the goal. And how do you measure how many people are reading it? How many people actually contacted me afterwards and mm -hmm. asking? So now I have more clients. At that point, I wasn't serving so many clients. So it was very easy. And still, it is not that hard to ask your clients, especially in our type of business, when you work one-on-one -on -one with them, uh, to ask how, what made you come to me or who, how did you find out about Spin Ideas or how, what made you mm -hmm. work with, uh, choose us? And um, you, I was very surprised actually to hear because of the content, this is how they found us because that wasn't my objective. My mm. objective was actually um, educating them. Um, at this point is um, how do I choose? That was at the beginning. At this point, we are actually slightly changing and it's the same approach. Like what do we want to achieve mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a business goals? And then we, go to the marketing goals of course they are connected and of course you look at the one thing that i i think we spoke about this is how do the the marketing goals serve the business goals and you need to look at your overall operation and how much are you able to deliver and what do you need to do that because if i'm mm -hmm. saying i want 100 clients honestly at this point i'm not able to serve 100 clients because i don't have the manpower and the capacity to do that Mm -hmm. So you need to be very realistic. So we need to see what, how many clients, what do we want to achieve? What are we focusing? What are we launching in terms of services this year? And from there, that will dictate the, the content strategy and mm -hmm. what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so are you, are you doing, uh, so I know you have blog articles. So do you have a goal for the number of blog articles that you publish per month or per quarter, or does it vary depending on what campaigns are running or how do you think about 
but this uh, point blog. it varies because we were um my team is very international so it took us a little bit longer than it should to be in one place and discuss and um i love working remotely i do recommend it but i do feel for something like that <laughs> a strategy meeting i do need everyone in one place that works for me personally so we are in process actually of implementing that and dictating the number of content uh, mm -hmm. based on the KPI. So this will mm -hmm. actually happen this week, but mm -hmm. it does dictate, they are influenced. You can't really not connect them because mm -hmm. um, as said, consistency is the key. And uh, you do need to be consistent in terms of uh, whatever you, is it an article or speaking engagement or like, whatever you're doing look at our podcast we were very consistent we we, we mm -hmm. decided we want to deliver this and we we actually that doesn't mean you can't switch when you feel mm -hmm. it needs to be changed because it's not working looking at the kpis or other factors uh, came yeah. into place um so flexibility is required but yes uh the question is uh, the, the answer is yes you we do mm -hmm. choose um a specific number of content that needs to be delivered in order to serve the goal we set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I agree with that. Um, I think one other area comes to mind for me. So I also, uh, because I have split my brand, so I have the company facing side, which is on the Jillian group. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I have the individual facing side, which is the, the JillianVorce.com. So now it's producing specific content for those two overlapping but different kind of audiences yeah. and so working on that and that also relates through social media outlets etc as well as podcasting and all the other things um, but I think in terms of one other opportunity with content and specifically content strategy is through partnerships this is kind of a I feel like a low hanging fruit opportunity for people to to begin building partnerships um, through content, right? So it could yeah. be audio content like we have or video content with this mm -hmm. podcast. It can also be with articles um, in mm -hmm. workshops. So I have two, uh, three, I have a few of these uh, in motion right now. So there's one group I'm working with right now. We're uh, collaborating together and creating a series of content uh, for online events that will culminate in one uh, offline kind of gathering mm -hmm. um, around the topic of ESG uh, in, yeah. in, uh, implementation strategy for companies. And so there's a few of us topic. that each have one component. Uh, so mine is the governance side and leadership business operations. Uh, so we're working together in that. And so that's a great opportunity to, yeah, to form partnerships, to access mm -hmm. different audiences and to produce something that you know, I myself or me with my team would not have as good of a go at. It's much more strategic to to align with other professionals that have complementary skills or audiences or what have you. So uh, have that one. And then we're also creating a, a series for the construction industry. It's one of the industries that's um, really could perhaps do a little bit better in terms of uh, not damaging the environment so much, um, as well as on the um, kind of diversity front, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the, the last quick example I have is I also do this with blog articles, not always, um, but right now we're working on a series of blog articles um, that I, this one we could produce ourselves and my team, we collaborate with a lot of these articles. Um, so we have one that's pretty okay. Um, and I could have published, I don't know, it was done like a month ago or more, but I thought it's a, this particular article is a great opportunity to uh, to bring in some other kind of experts, so to speak, to incorporate their perspective, their ideas, feedback, et cetera, et cetera. So we decided it kind of took off, it threw off our, our publishing schedule a little bit, <laughs> uh, but I think the result will be better because it'll be a better piece for the reader um, as well as creating stronger relationships with the other folks that we're partnering with for this particular article. And then perhaps when it is published, they may also share it as well. And we're creating little sure. clips to promote with them. So I think content strategy can be um, applicable for partnerships. So I we, we did that. And actually that's a good segue to repurposing because um, now we changed the approach to the online networking with the spin, but a couple of years ago, 
um, the, the format is the same. We always have an expert sharing tips on a specific topic. Um, and what we did, uh, we invited uh, the expert to actually, because you have three minutes, three times three minutes to share tips, right? You don't have a lot of time to explore the topic in details. So to, to come around to find a solution around that, we invited the experts to actually write an article in collaboration with us on that particular topic. And we published them on the website. So we had the event that is content, we transformed it in written content, repurposing. And what we did afterwards, at the end of the year, we took, I think we have two edition of the books. We took the entire uh, selection of the articles, 12, and we put them in an ebook sharing mm. expertise. And that became a funnel, actually, a marketing funnel, mm -hmm. because in order to get the ebook, you do need to give your email address. So we are increasing the um, um, our database of prospects mm. or audience. And of course, being in that format and having a content, as you said, the expert will want to share it because it's their expertise, right? And they do want to share their mm -hmm. knowledge. So that enables you to reach more people because you are present to new audiences. So it's, it's um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The snowball effect, right? Yes, like it yes. It goes and grows and grows. And yes. it does work, but you do need to, and of course, like everyone, we, we did had better results and not that good results. It's very important to um, look at the person or the, the companies or the expert you are collaborating and to make sure the values are in line. And that's yes. not only values actually, but also expectations. Mm -hmm. yes. I think that's very important because yes, probably values are in line and the expertise is in line once that you are collaborating and you're doing so many things. But one more thing that needs to be in line is what are you expecting out of this collaboration? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I love that example you just gave about repurposing the content. Um, and it makes me think of one other that I'll toss in the hat. And then I think this is me emptying my pockets on this topic. <laughs> but uh, the last one I have is just another, um, perhaps it's a, yeah, it it's, can be a tactic. It's, there's a strategic component, et cetera, but it's definitely also repurposing, um, which is to create audio versions of written content. No, oh, that's a good one, yes. Uh, and this is, uh, so I have a great example. There's a link I'm going to include. Uh, there's a, a social listening company based in the US, uh, B Squared Media, um, where we had spoken about this and then they created an article uh, featuring this uh, as an example. So um, I think it's relevant, it's interesting, and it's a different way to think about uh, to and how to create and or repurpose content. So yeah. I'll include the link for that. And the other way around, especially for small clients, what I'm noticing, and we did that for a client, uh, she was fantastic at creating videos. But when you ask her to write the same topic, the same idea, she got stuck. So mm. actually what we did, like you create the videos, that's amazing content. And especially if a person has a charisma, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, there are some people that are amazing at public speaking and videos and it, it just works for them. And you get that and you just put it into an article. And actually the trick is you don't need that person to do it. Somebody else can do it for them. Yes. And you'll be surprised. You'll expect more people will be comfortable writing, not speaking. Actually, mm -hmm. it's the opposite from my experience or at least what, what I came across in terms of clients. So this is a great way to actually create more content for them because mm -hmm. everyone is consuming content differently or depending on the moment where they are, they do do consume it differently yeah absolutely this is how we actually used to content uh, create content with clients as we would schedule because a lot for my in my experience a lot of clients would think um i would say almost without exception we did have one uh and the founder really fancied his writing skills um but everybody else tended to shy away from writing especially because like the blank page of doubt that just looks at you so mm -hmm. what we would do is is um yeah we would create the structure around it and schedule inter interview sessions with yeah. the client and we did, you know, we did something similar as well yeah, yeah. and then we record the whole thing so then we'd have mm -hmm. you know some drafts to work from and in my experience people love to edit um they don't love oh. to start with a blank page so we would try to churn out a draft as quickly as we could for them to then make it their own. And so that was a pretty effective strategy to help 
with content creation for clients. So yeah, know, that's helpful to anybody listening. But yeah, it is it is a good one. We did use it as well. Mm. And then you need to um one advice I will I will give to this, and I think that's a wrap up for this one. Be clear on how many times they can edit because otherwise it can become an endless process <laughs> because always they will be oh wait one more thing here or I would like to change that and then you're never going to finish so usually it's good to say we have two rounds and that's it <laughs> yeah we we're we were pretty structured about the time frame and the yeah the schedule of all the content that was going and the deadlines for things and whatnot so that's a good yeah. point too yeah yeah so all right, so before we wrap today's session, we'll just uh, give another plug and share this opportunity we have. Uh, I wanna tell uh, tell folks if they haven't already heard, tell them about our listener brainstorm, our, uh, brainstorm sessions, live brainstorm sessions for listeners. Wanna, since I just butchered it, do you wanna clean up my mess here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking if they haven't heard yet, that means mm. they didn't listen to us. So that's right. This um, might be the first time. Maybe they just maybe, found out about so us. In that case, you know. welcome and thank you yes. for listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we do we did have two sessions, one about the online networking in the spin and one about Jillian's company and yeah. the 2.0 version of her company and basically what we did we we talked about it and we used each other's skills on uh providing advice auditing and coming up with solutions on how to grow or providing a different perspective and mm -hmm. because we had so much fun we said how about we are doing that for our audience so if mm -hmm. you are listening up and you have a um, burning question or you want to transform your business or you just want an extra opinion or you whatever uh, we have a form, a beautiful form with some questions uh, that will be linked in the in the notes. Fill it in and uh, schedule a call with us to see uh, how we can help you providing advice to change your company. So Perfect. take advantage and uh, pick pick our brains. I yes. I did use it correctly now. <laughs> yeah, our brains. <laughs> And um, I'm very excited about that. I love, I love these things. Uh, just uh, see what is happening. Right. And I think that's a wrap up on episode 33. 33. So until next time, have a spiffy day. Bye. Cheers.